uh, willkommen zu meinem Talk Fooling AI into believing turtles are weapons. So, uh, what, is the, what is this all about? So, you have maybe heard of adversarial attacks or not. Uh, at least, let me explain a little bit of what this is. So, here we can see on the left, we have a normal picture of a panda and a neural network or a machine learning system uh, identifies it as a panda with 57% uh, confidence because neural networks are usually not always that confident about their decisions. However, if we add some very specific small noise, so small alterations to each pixel, we can create an image that looks exactly like the original for us. However, for a neural network, it looks like a gibbon. And it's 99% confidence that this is a gibbon. Uh, I don't know about you, but for me, this still looks like a panda. So there might be something wrong here. So let's look at exactly what is going on here. So when we identify pictures with neural networks, we usually first take the pixels of the image and each individual pixel is fed into this neural network. So each pixel uh, gets into this input neuron and then some mathematical operations are performed on it so that we can uh, deter what is going on. You don't need to know exactly what's going on inside the network here. It's just important that for the output of the network, we get a probability distributions over what the network thinks it's, go it's looking at. In this case, whoops. This is what I wanted to show. <laughs> um, in this case, we have a 90% chance that this, net, that this thing is a turtle and a 10% chance that this is a weapon. Usually, we, we assign more labels than that, but for our example now, let's keep it that, that, way, that way. So what happens if we alter one pixel by a slight amount? We can see here, if we uh, deduct one from the input pixel, the output of the network changes by a small amount, in this case, 1%. And we can see that now it's only 89% confident that this is a turtle and 11% confident that this is a weapon. If we continue this with the next pixel, we can see here, uh, in this case, we have to change the pixel uh, up by one. And we can see here that the error accumulates. We can have the error uh, continue to be greater and greater, and our confidence that this is a turtle deters with each pixel. If we do this for all the pixels, suddenly we have a 99% probability that this is a weapon, which is kind of scary because the original image still looks the same and we don't really know what's go why this is happening. So we now have a weapon. Um, of course, the method we use just now is really inconvenient and slow, so we want to have something faster. So, so what's the best way of tricking a machine learning system? Of course, it's using more machine learning. So we use actually exactly the same tools we use for training our networks like backpropagation and gradient descent to, ac to actually create those uh, adversarial images. However, there's no time for that today because we have something much more fun to talk about, which is, uh, so if you want to know more about it, you can go to this website and check it out. They have really nice tutorials and show you how exactly this is done on a technical level. However, we are interested in what can we do with this? So in 2016, someone figured out this can be done not just with an image on a computer, but also with an image that's printed out. So in this case, they had an image of a washing machine and they printed it out, uh, made a photo of it, and then made the machine learning system identify what it is. Originally, the system was 53% confident that this is still a washing machine. However, if we make an adversarial attack on it, which we can't see, all of those images basically look the same, but for the machine learning system, this is now a safe or a loudspeaker or basically whatever we want, actually, because those attacks don't really care 
what what is going to be displayed. Um, in 2017, we figured out, okay, we can also use this on stop signs. We can put weird stickers on stop signs, and then our machine learning system thinks they are something different. In this case, we can make it look like this, <laughs> or any other traffic sign we want, because, as I said, the labels are don't, don't really matter in this case. Which you can maybe think this is not going to go well. So let's continue. Uh, in this case, we in, in 2017, we figured out there are, there's the possibility of adding adversarial patches. Adversarial patches work a little bit different. They are small disks of paper, which you print and then put in any image. And your machine learning system will focus on them and will identify whatever is in the picture as what you want. In this case, if you put it in here, the banana, uh, originally the banana is identified as a banana. And if we put a weird looking sticker on to the image, we get it identified as a toaster. And in effect, it doesn't matter where we put it, whenever this sticker is on the picture, the machine learning algorithm will say, oh yeah, I see a toaster. I don't know about you, I don't think this is really looking like a toaster, but yeah, you get the idea. Uh, turns out, adversarial attacks also work on audio data. So, for, uh, because audio data is for a machine learning system kind of similar to images, we can just have the audio uh, waveform add a small noise uh, to it, which then makes it look exactly the same. It also sounds to humans exactly the same, but to a machine learning system, it might sound like something like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> if this, you, you also might guess, this could cause some problems for some people because if they don't even realize that Alexa is just uh, instructed to delete the photos, yeah, well, what might happen? Okay, another example are content filters. So we can also apply this to text processing. Um, in, in this case, we have a system that detects hate speech. So if we put in some swear words, and uh, let it classi be classified, then it's identified as hate speech. However, researchers in 2018 figured out that some of those systems, if you just put the word love at the end, then it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Doesn't really make sense, but okay. Uh, we can also apply this to, to try to protect our privacy a bit. We can uh, create adversarial t-shirts, which are created with the same techniques. They are, in this case, used to confuse the system and make the system believe that this is not a person. Because uh, this, is, this was created with an adversarial attack, and now whenever this, system, uh, this person is in the frame, this machine learning system doesn't identify it as a person. So, yeah. The caveat here is this only works on a specific uh, identification system and is probably not going to work on every camera system that you ever encounter. So here for the name giver of this talk, the 3D printed rifle turtle. Actually, this is a 3D printed model of a turtle which was modified via an adversarial attack. So the texture of the model was actually created with this technology. And now whenever we take a picture from whatever uh, angle we want, usually it is identified as a rifle or as something else, but m almost never as a turtle, which is, yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like a rifle, right? Um, and for the last uh, demonstration today, we have the 2019 Tesla autopilot hack. So quick reminder on autonomous driving. In autonomous driving, we have the camera image from the car, which is fed into a neural network, and then the neural network decides what to do. In this case, to accelerate, to turn left, and other possibilities. And uh, this can also be attacked via an adversarial attack. So we can actually figure out, okay, how is it doing that? And researchers did this in uh, 2019, 
And they figured out if they print small white dots on the lanes, then the car fi thinks, oh yeah, the lane is ending here, I need to turn left. Which is usually not what you want, and also not what you expect. So this is how this looks when you, when you are in the car. Um, the dots are rather small. Um, yeah, no one was hurt in this, and actually, to be fair, it's, it was on a test track, it was, uh, there were no other cars on the road, so it's kind of a proof of concept, more or less, and it's not that, it's, it's not an immediate threat to your safety if you drive a Tesla. And also the Tesla spokesperson said, yeah, okay, it's not really realistic because uh, you can always override autopilot. Another reason not to sleep in your Tesla, by the way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that. So where do we go from now? Um, so how, how hard is it to fix this in this, these systems? Like basically almost every machine learning system has some kind of vulnerability to this. And uh, yeah, how, how, how hard is it, can it be to, to get rid of this? The, the real answer is yes, it's hard. <laughs> Um, there have been over 500 proposed solutions over the last eight years. And the best one so far, uh, on ImageNet at least, gets you to about 60% probability of an attack on a single image. So I like all on the entire data set. So yeah, uh, in fact, you cannot really prevent this at uh, at the technical level. However, to be fair, not all systems just process images without thinking about them. So let's, let's talk a bit more about how, how serious is this Unreal World system. And for this, it kind of depends. Because if your parameters are private, so if your network cannot be accessed by anyone, this is, for example, this case with online content filters or facial recognition systems where you don't have access to the actual box, don't have access to the parameters of the, your system. Then in this case, the attacks don't really work that well. We don't have like an attack where you can completely uh, bypass Google, uh, Google's YouTube filters or something like that. So in this case, you're kind of safe, probably. Uh, another thing is when your parameters are public. And public, I mean, they are accessible by someone, either because you gave it to them, you can download it to your computer, or in case of the Tesla, you could hack your car, figure out the parameters of your network, and reverse engineer it. That's, of course, uh, very expensive, but it has been done. So another example would be speech assistants. They sit in your home and you can just access the device, hack it and figure out the parameters. In this case, attacks work pretty well, um, but also only for specific cases. You can't just like, uh, like you, you have to be, for, for a speech assistant for instance, you have to be in proximity to actually play this audio and so on. But of course you have to think about it and uh, be aware of the risk. So uh, to conclude, what are the con consequences for security and safety? Should you panic about this? No, you should not just panic about it. Uh, is this a problem for AI? Well, that depends on how you use your AI. You uh, obviously always need to be aware of this risk. And now that you know about it, it's probably nice. So uh, as a last talking point, I wanted to say, is this a problem for open source? Because we are open source conference here. And in my opinion, yes, this is a problem because publishing your network also means that you uh, expose yourself to this kind of attack. So if you kept your parameters private, you are well, relatively secure. Whereas if you publish your parameters, every, everyone can just look at them, exploit them, and figure out some adversarial attack for them. And this could be bad for whatever kind of system you're developing. 
So this might also lead to people not wanting to share their code or like their networks, which is uh, not so great. So uh, here are my sources for the presentation. Thank you very much. So, any questions? Yeah? Uh, so, uh, for example, uh, um, Apple uh, introduced, or wants to introduce the client side scanning uh, with neural networks or something like that. So, this will be uh, the second case where you've got the neural network you can test against. Yeah. So, so the question was about. Uh, Apple Face ID, so the fa face unlock feature which Apple introduced in the iPhones where you can scan your face to actually access your, your phone. In this case, uh, it's a bit tricky because yes, the parameters are actually stored on your phone, so you would assume that yeah, someone could access them. However, you need to remember if someone actually opens up your phone or like uh, gets inside of the secure chip where the parameters are stored, then they ha probably already have more access than someone who's hacked your phone. So in this case, I would say the system is still secure because uh, if, if you have to like open up the device, figure out the parameters or something like that, it's, it's a lot harder. Uh, the other option would be to hack your, your uh, iPhone f to figure out the parameters, but also in this case you already have the access on the device you want to gain from the attack, so it kind of doesn't make sense. So I would say uh, in this case it's also not really a concern. Uh, also because w once you have the parameters, the, to, to gain the parameters you would have to have already a lot of access. So. Any other question? Okay, so uh, the other question, the actual <laughs> question was about another uh, machine learning system ever deployed, which is content filtering for everyone. So uh, basically, I think it is deployed as an upload filter where you, your, your photos are scanned before they are uploaded, or actually your photos you just have on your device. If they detect something malicious, like child pornography or something like that, they will report it. And the way they do this is by scanning each of those photos and classifying it with a neural network. And if the neural network says, okay, this is uh, uh, something malicious, then we will report it. And for this case, probably, <laughs> this, this might be a problem if someone figures out the parameters because all the parameters are shared across all devices. So if someone actually gets access to this network, they could, in fact, create content that is uh, that the network won't detect as malicious even though it actually is. That's true. However, uh, I mean, those, those systems are probably not made for like detecting all bad content. It's mainly for like detecting things if you leave them unencrypted on your iPhone. So. <laughs> That's also possible, yeah. That, 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 that would also be a, an issue. So you could also craft an image which looks benign, but for the neural network it looks like something bad. So they would report you to Apple or whatever, whoever then these uh, reports go to. And yeah, that would be bad. However, I don't think that they would just throw you into jail because you have a benign image which looks weird for neural networks. So still, 
yeah, that's a possibility of how to abuse this. Sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> similar to spotting, yes. Okay, any other questions? No? Okay, so quick reminder, we have uh, the Linux target CTF. So if you want to know more about security, then you can go to our uh, Linux target website and solve some security challenges, or you can visit us later at Herzl EFIA. So yeah, thanks again, and see you later maybe. <laughs>